Hello everyone, my name is Evan, and during this video today, we'll be making the new Godzilla Evo skeleton, I do say. And as I craft away, we'll be learning about this new, well, pink Godzilla, you could say? In this video today, I'll be sculpting away, making the new Godzilla design, you could say. And as I sculpt away at the skeleton today, we'll be talking about the new Empire, I do say. Or Godzilla from Godzilla X Kong, you might say. So let's get this deep dive underway. Be sure to smash that like button as hard as a kaiju, comment below what you think of the project, and if you are new here and enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe if you're new, because I do deep dives and all the things I make, including monsters and dinosaurs. The new Empire trailer has given us our first look at Godzilla Evo, and he looks different? Now, I personally really like it. It seems to be homaging Godzilla 2000, which happens to be one of my favorite Goji films and designs, so that obviously makes me well happy. However, the design hasn't gone over super well in the community. Plenty have stated their disappointment that this might be the way Godzilla looks from now on. It's recently been discovered in Monarch Legacy of Monsters that Godzilla evolves using nuclear energy. But no one knew what this new Godzilla was going to be up until the new trailers recently. But now that the trailers have finally been released, we can get a closer look at this new design. And whether or not this will be Godzilla's most powerful form yet. So, let's get into this deep dive. For those that were patrolling the internet weeks prior to the trailer's release, you probably saw some of the toy releases, which were not good first impressions. To sum it up, basically Godzilla was seen with a light blue skin color, with a brown armored chest and red dorsal plates, and most notably, a very snatched waist. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh no, what have you done to him? In all honesty, I think what the f would have been more appropriate, but you get the point. Because personally, I really kind of like the chubby, bulky, hippopotamus, muscular look of the old Godzilla, because that felt like something that would actually really exist at the bottom of the ocean. It was arguably anatomically the most realistic Godzilla has actually ever looked. Other than my opinion, perhaps Zilla, but we won't go there because I know how Godzilla fans feel about that guy. The point at hand is legendary Godzilla at this point, so we'll stay focused on him. Then in King of the Monsters, they changed his look a little bit more, and I liked it a little less to be honest. I personally prefer those jagged dorsal plates a little bit more, and the sauropod-like feet. But overall, it still looked like legendary Godzilla. But now going to this new look, it is super different. And I think for a lot of the toy models, it boiled down to that waist. Where are his organs? In the previous designs, it looked like he was muscular and built where if he was punched in the stomach, he wouldn't be able to feel anything. But now his waist looks like it wouldn't be able to hold up the top half of his body. Not to mention how long his arms are, which are extremely long now. They've practically given him human proportions. But I would have to say it's saving grace were those red dorsal plates. Obviously, Godzilla's been red in the past, so I thought this was a nice homage to burning Godzilla, possibly. And his red spiral ray. And I actually really like how sharp and jagged those dorsal plates look. That actually reminds me more of a combination of Godzilla 2000 and the 2014 design dorsal plates. So obviously that gets a big thumbs up from me. So of course I was glad to see they were doing more of an angular design here. But because it's a Playmates figure we're talking about here, the proportions aren't going to be super accurate. They're on the side of the cheap Monsterverse figure range, so they aren't going to be the best looking. So I think a lot of people gave it the benefit of the doubt and waited for official images. So that left the question, how does it translate to film? And thankfully, it looks a lot better. He was first seen through a merch design launch through Legendary's website, and his proportions looked far more menacing. I really like his skin color, it's a lot more darker and more that traditional like charcoal black almost, which contrasts very well with his lighter dorsal plates. I honestly really like the head design, although making all those spikes was a bit of a nightmare, but I'm definitely digging the sharp and spiky look that they're going for. He definitely looks a lot less huggable now. Now, I don't think there's going to be any more complaints that he looks fat, because if anything, he's malnourished at this point. However, the waist does contrast to film a lot better than it does on the toys. He is definitely a lot more hunched over than normal 
normal. So I definitely feel like they are acknowledging that he is a little bit top heavy at this point. It definitely gives him more of the impression of a bull now. So during this film, I think we're going to see a lot of scenes where he's basically just charging full head on into the enemy. Since this is meant to be a all new powerful form for Godzilla, I am 100% sure that we're going to get some new powers here. One of which I'm assuming is an atomic tail whip. I am saying that because Godzilla now has Thegamizers. And yes, just like a Stegosaurus, for those of you who may be unaware, a Thegamizer is referred to the spiky ends on the tail on a Stegosaurus. It actually derived from an old comic book and apparently some paleontologists found it was funny, so they basically adapted it into an actual scientific term. Either way, this is really cool for Godzilla because since the 1954 original, scientists have stated Godzilla is like a combination between a T-Rex and a Stegosaurus, and probably a lesser known fact, his arms are actually inspired by an Iguanodon. You can actually see on the Playmates figure that some of his dorsal plates split off into sharp spikes on the end of his tail. So I could definitely see these things glowing with atomic energy and becoming a deadly melee attack. And well, who knows, he also might be like Shin Godzilla and be able to shoot atomic blasts from the end of his tail. Now, obviously the biggest thing that stands out in comparison to, well, the film Godzilla and the toy Godzilla, his dorsal plates definitely are not red. They're just full on pink, or magenta technically. Now, personally, I really do not have an issue with this. I think it looks cool. And if we get a scene with him glowing in a dark cavern, well, I think that would be visually incredible. I think Adam Wingard's really diving into that neon 80s aesthetic here. But I've also seen a lot of people that also have a lot of issues with it, unfortunately. Which is kind of interesting, because I personally probably would have preferred the red dorsal plates that was seen in the figures, but in all honesty, I think a lot of people probably would have. But I don't really have any issues with the way it looks in the film. Although, some people have gotten really angry over the color, because, you know, red is cool and pink is for girls, and personally, all I really have to say to that is, well, I kind of see you people as being somewhat like this guy. Worst Godzilla ever! And in all honesty, I just think that's dumb. Really dumb. It's Godzilla. Just because he's got slightly pink dorsal plates does not mean he's turning into a woman. Now, maybe for me, the reason I think I like the color so much is because it kind of looks like Godzilla ate a needler. And honestly, the spikes even kind of have the same shape. And obviously, color contrast. And honestly, the overall sharpness of them looks like they could be a weapon on their own. Like, I could imagine him jumping into the enemy and basically just kind of turning his back into them. Which actually might be not that far from the truth because we actually see Godzilla has elbow spikes now, which I made earlier. And they almost look exactly the same as the dorsal plates from his back. So I think that kind of hints at that he's going to start actually using them as melee weapons. Not to mention the fact that this would probably make his dorsal slice attack far more, well, destructive. Overall, I think it's really cool, and I personally really like this new design. And in all honesty, I'm thinking about picking up the SH Monster Arts figure of this, so that might be popping up on my YouTube channel soon. Some other complaints people have had about it is, well, the extremely long arms and the kind of skinny legs. Now, personally, I'm kind of happy about this because it's going to make my life as a stop motion animator a lot easier with these longer arms. I'll be able to basically do far more motions and capabilities with them. Not to mention the fact that I've recently come up with a new shoulder design during this video, obviously. And about those, well, massive tree trunks for legs, I am going to kind of miss those. But again, it's going to make my life for this doll in particular a lot easier to animate because the legs will be far more flexible in comparison to some of my other ones that have, well big tree trunks. So be it as it may, some people kind of dislike those features. It's, well, some bonus points for me personally. Now, I think the big argument there is his arms were never really exactly the best for melee attacks, which kind of separated him from King Kong, obviously. So I think that's probably where a lot of those complaints are deriving from, which I get it. But at the same time, too, he's going to be far more capable in person. I think it's going to be a lot cooler to see him be able to do more melee attacks, not to mention his, you know, other possible new powers that could be coming soon. So I'm definitely looking forward to this film. And it probably should be mentioned, even though it's extremely obvious in my opinion, this is a more evolved form of Godzilla, so it does kind of make more sense that his weak points would be a little bit more addressed. Either way, I think it's one of those things we're gonna have to wait till the film comes out to figure out how he really handles combat with this new form. All that we can really tell so far that he is going to be the most vicious and brutal Godzilla ever yet. And in my humble and honest opinion, it is definitely not the worst design ever. Either way, that concludes all the fun facts on the new pink Godzilla. So now it's time for the build rundown. 
So on this legendary Godzilla project today, we've built the skeleton, you could say, which will serve as our armature frame or the armature doll skeleton. The materials used during this project today are aluminum wire, you could say. I definitely used a lot thicker gauge. I believe it's like probably up to two millimeters, three millimeters thick at this point. Definitely upscaled that because my projects have definitely gotten a lot bigger and unfortunately that has become a problem with some of them with the wire being a little bit too thin. But I also did use the thin gauge wire to basically add a little bit more bone structure and the bones are basically made out of oven baked clay. As well as the spikes, I do say. Except I used a different color for the face there just to give it, well, a little bit more of a chance when I start painting things over to not really show through if things start getting, well, a little bit flaky. Also some tin foil to help keep the weight down and well save us a lot on clay and a little bit of plasticine clay to help everything just kind of well stay in place. And I use Lego ball joints for the shoulders and hips. Now be sure to tune in next week where we'll be painting the skeleton I do say as well as adding the clay. We'll also be continuing the deep dive as well. So be sure to like the video, comment below what you think, share with your friends and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new. And right that's all for me, till next time, take it easy.